So next up, uh, courtesy of all our sponsors and our ability to put on a show like this, is Jason Morgan, who is a tech evangelist with uh, Boundary. And Buoyant. He, uh, what's up? Buoyant. Buoyant. I'm sorry. No problem. Buoyant. Uh, my apologies. No problem. Buoyant. Uh, who is going to talk to us about multi-cluster failover with a service mesh, uh, specifically Linkerd, right? Yeah. All right. Good deal. We, we're loading. All right, loading. Loading. Oh, hold on. I've got to get my internet working. Sorry. Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> so uh, everybody enjoy uh, Marianne's talk? Earlier this morning, just prior to this, awesome, yeah, uh, really kind of interesting stuff, different than we normally think about, right? So, we good? All right, take it away. Awesome. Uh, hey, folks, uh, thanks so much for having me. Uh, my name is Jason Morgan. I'm a technical evangelist with Buoyant, the company that makes uh, the Linkerd project. And I'm here to talk to you about failing over a service between clusters with the service mesh. And my, my big promise to you today is that this demo is going to be boring, and you're going to see me do it with two, uh, two custom resource definitions. No changes to my app, just kind of standard Kubernetes, a little Linkerd rubbed in. So yeah, this is me. You can find me on Twitter at Jason Morgan. You can find me on GitHub at Jason Morgan, and you can find me on Slack at Jason Morgan, because I'm creative and I use my name for everything. So for those in the audience, who knows what Linkerd is? Nice. A decent bit. For those that don't know, let me just introduce it real quick. It is a lightweight, fast, and security-focused uh, service mesh for Kubernetes. It is specifically targeted at Kubernetes. Uh, it's created by the folks over at Buoyant, the company that, that I work for. Been in production a long time. We have a very active community. You can check out what's, what's new by looking at our edge releases. Uh, we're a CNCF project, and in fact, we are the only service mesh to take graduated status within the CNCF. That means we're ranked among the most mature products that the CNCF has. Uh, we've got adopters from all sorts of organizations, and I hope it's my job to encourage you to try it out. So a quick talk about how does Linkerd work, right? Well, how does any service mesh work, I guess? Um, so this is, this is an example of a cluster. We've got an application. It's going to have a web front end and two back ends, foo and bar. Uh, we also have an ingress in our cluster. The way a service mesh works is we install a series of small proxies in between all your application components, and we intercept your traffic. So instead of going from web to foo, your traffic is going to go from web to proxy to proxy to foo. Right? So we're going to add two new hops into every single conversation between your applications. So we're going to add latency, and we're going to take up some of your CPU and memory, and we're going to take up some of your operator's brain. Sorry about that, but we're going to try and be really light on all those things. And the reason you're going to use a service mesh is so that you can get some things for fairly low cost in your environment. So specifically, we're going to talk today about how do, we, how do we fail over between things in Linkerd. But before we do this, let me just give you a quick rundown of what we're looking at. So this here is the Linkerd dashboard. It's got a view of what all is going on in our cluster. We can see for every application, we get things like the percentage of requests that are succeeding. We get the request per second that any given component is looking at. By the way, if you're here and you want to look at any of the, the web apps I'm doing, I decided to do everything live because I'm uh, reckless. Uh, so you can go to dashboard.sevo.cates.io to, to view the, or sorry, .59s.io to view this dashboard. You can also go to see my app that we're going to fail over at emojivoto.sevo.59s.io. Uh, so we can see our application. We get metrics about our various components. We could look at the Emojivoto app, which is what we're actually going to be failing over today and we can see a little bit about its architecture. This isn't stuff that we've, we haven't told Linkerd about the app, and we haven't told the app about Linkerd. We simply installed Linkerd, added our proxies, and this sort of information is automatically surfaced. Sounds good so far? Making sense? Great. Uh, let's talk about what we're going to do today, which is failing over 
uh, failing over traffic for one of our application components between our clusters. So Linkerd failover operator relies on a multi-cluster connection. So we have two Kubernetes clusters running out in an environment. Uh, they're sitting fairly close together, and we've connected them via Linkerd's multi-cluster gateway. I'm going to show you a little bit about how that works in a second. Uh, we then put an, an operator inside of our cluster that watches a given service to make sure that it's available. And then when it doesn't see available endpoints for that service, it's going to change the traffic from a local service to a remote service. Uh, it's built on top of the service mesh interface traffic split object, uh, which is a lot of words, but it's just an object that basically that defines where do you want your traffic going, service A or service B. Is anyone familiar with Flagger, or has anyone seen that? So it's, it's very, thank you. Uh, it's very similar to the way Flagger works, where uh, it just basically modifies this service mesh object, this, this traffic split object, in order to shift your traffic around. Um, and yeah, it just watches for valid endpoints. And with that, we're going to actually look at a live whiteboard. So can everyone see this okay? Uh, we're getting middle thumbs. How about that? Better? Okay. So we have two clusters. I call them east and west for clarity. Um, they're each configured identically. We have an ingress in each one. Uh, we have a web front end and two back ends, vote and emoji. We're actually looking at this application right here, our emoji voto app. It allows you to go online, uh, vote on which emoji you like the best, and view your leaderboard. We have a lot of votes because I've been leaving this thing running. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to show how we can take one component of Emoji Voto offline uh, with, uh, with this failover operator and see it not actually lose any traffic. So my goal is to have the most boring demo of the day because uh, nothing happens. Thank you for the laugh there. Uh, all right. So to start, the first thing we do, uh, first thing we do when we set this up is we deployed our app. So this is already deployed. So I'm just going to show you a little bit about how this works. Uh, we've deployed our clusters, and the first thing we do is we connect the clusters together using uh, Linkerd's multi-cluster capability. So this is nice, and you can read more about it uh, over at our over our docs, which detail how multi-cluster communication works. Uh, but the core functionality here is we install a service on each cluster, which is a multi-cluster gateway. It goes and gets a load balancer, an external IP, or whatever's appropriate for your particular running environment. Uh, and then we, we link the two clusters together uh, via a Kubernetes object called a multi-cluster link, because we're, we're also very creative. All right. There we go. So we create, uh, we install these multi-cluster gateways, and we link them together. Right? And that allows us to pass traffic between these clusters. The goal here with, with Linkerd's multi-cluster is that we don't want you to have to do anything special from a networking perspective, and we don't want you to have to do anything special from a Kubernetes perspective. So to get this, to get this done, you're, not, you're only required so far to use one custom resource, which is our multi-cluster link resource. I'm, I think I'm being a little loud here. But our multi-cluster link resource, right? So that's our first CRD in play. So let's take a look at these gateways. So if we look here, I can do Linkerd multi-cluster gateways. And we can see in our east cluster that we have a, a link alive, and it's pointing to the west cluster. And if I change my cube config, and we ask for the same thing, we're going to see that we have another live link pointing to our east cluster. Uh, and a little few details about the latency. So going back, that's that's step one, right? Is we wanted to we want to connect the clusters, and we've got that done. Step two is we want to take our individual services. So in each cluster, I have a web service, a vote service, and an emoji service, and they're they're what power my application. If you're not familiar with services in Kubernetes, that's like your service discovery object. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take our web app service, and we're going to export it. So we're going to put an annotation on our web service. And I actually did this for all of our components, because I really feel emotionally invested in 
emoji photo app, so I'm going to show you how to fail over every single component here. But what we do is we put an annotation that says, hey, please export this service, and then the multi-cluster module within Linkerd is going to import that service over to the other cluster and make it look like it's local. So let's see how that works. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm grabbing the emoji service from my remote cluster, my, wet, my west cluster, and we're just going to look at the, at the YAML config. So in order, to, in order to make this a multi-cluster service, in order to get it from my east cluster to my west, my west cluster, I have to put in a label that says mirror IO Linkerd exported true, and that's it. Right, like I've now done the connection. If I am in the east cluster, if I send a curl over to this URL, right, so whatever the service is, let's, let's grab the service. So if I send a curl to web service west, I'm actually going to reach out to the remote cluster. So I now have two clusters, even though they're, they're entirely different. Uh, I can communicate natively using Kubernetes services, no application modifications, no virtual service or gateway or egress config, just standard, you know, normal Kubernetes like everything else. Right, let's go back to our demo. So now that we have this done, right, like that's a nice, that's a nice start. But what we want to do is we want to automate the failover from one cluster to the other, which is the whole point of the demo. So let's get that going. So we're going to install the failover operator which I already did prior to this. So we install the failover operator in our cluster. This is a standard Kubernetes operator. It watches our objects within the, within the cluster and then makes changes based on its own, its own configuration. We're going to show you that in a second. Uh, we then create a traffic split. And a traffic split is kind of like a weird object. You create like this fake service, right? So we take over the web service name inside the cluster. And when you call the web service, you're actually hitting this, this traffic split. And the traffic split will decide, based on its own criteria, whether you're going to get web service local or web service remote, right? Or web service east or web service west. All right, so let's show that. So inside my cluster, I've got a traffic split for all of my components, the web front end, the voting back end, and the emoji back end. So now, the exciting or not, hopefully not exciting portion of this demo, we're going to take web offline. If you're here, if you can go to the emoji voto or emoji.sevo.59s.io, you can prove that I'm not lying, although you're on conference Wi-Fi, so good luck. But you can, you can prove that I'm not lying. Uh, so let's, let's do some stuff. Oops. All right, so I'm going to run a watch command to just look at my traffic splits. So right now, I can see, based on this view, that I have you know, three services, or actually, I have a bunch of traffic splits. Right? One for each of my three services, and they're either going to the local one with no prefix or the remote one with a prefix. Uh, my app is kind of deliberately broken, which is what makes it fun for demos, but that's why you see degraded success rates. The important thing here is you see this wait. Right? We either have wait one on the local or wait zero on the remote. Right? And that's just telling us where 100% of the traffic is going at any one time. This can be more granular, but for our purposes, we want it to be pretty binary. And so what we're going to do here is we are going to scale the web service from one replica to zero. But before I do it, I want to show you what, what's really going to happen here. So effectively, what we're going to do is we're going to see what happens when we take the web service in cluster one offline. Right? And what we're, going to, what we're going to see is instead of going from, so let's redo our traffic a little bit. So right now, we've got this setup, where our ingress goes to web apex, which then gets routed to local in cluster web service. When I take web local down, 
we're going to see the traffic shift from apex over to west, and then the traffic is going to continue in the remote cluster. And then it will now shift over to, shift over to west. Y'all ready? Hold on, let's get our app going. So I'm privileged and I have a plugin so I can do a much faster, um, much faster web refresh than you. So we're going to take this down to one second. We're going to make this a little bit smaller so you can see it. Come on, buddy. All right. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to see the traffic fail from one to the other. So let's take web offline, wish me luck, and we saw no disruption in traffic, right? Like this just kept going. So I told you it's a boring demo, right? Because nothing, nothing happens. But I think if you're responsible for applications being available, nothing happening when you have a total failure of one of your components can be actually pretty exciting. Um, so we see some metrics on the left-hand side. It takes a bit for the, for the metrics to update. So we're polling Linkerd and we're asking it about the state of the traffic split. Um, it's showing us, but it's got data cached up to like a minute, right? So it takes a bit for, takes a bit for this to fall off. But now all of our, all of our traffic that was previously hitting the, hitting the east cluster is now moving over to west. So even though I'm still hitting the same DNS record, same IP address, same front door to my cluster, the back end of web service has shifted over. And we can see everything else disappearing. And the other exciting thing about the failover is when service is restored, when we have valid endpoints once again within our service, we scale back up and it shifts it back to in cluster. And again, nothing happened here to emoji vote. And we'll slow down this, uh, we'll slow down this refresh so that we can actually explore the app a little bit. Or we're just going to turn it off. Uh, and then we can fail over any of the components because, again, we want to go and make sure that everything worked. If we go take, say, voting, or let's take emoji off. Right, emoji is what provides us our awesome logos for this application. So scale emoji down to zero, do a refresh, and nothing happens. I can still vote. I can still view my leaderboard. I can still continue to do everything I was doing before. Uh, and that is the core of our Linkerd demo. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I'm not ready for questions just yet. I have a couple things I want to plug before we go. If you like this, it's my job to get folks to try out Linkerd. Like, we've got, uh, so one, we've got a Slack channel, so slack.linkerd.io. If you'd hop on, join us, holler at me. I'd love to, love to hear your perspective. Beyond that, we have a getting started guide. I'll tell you, I'll be around all day. If you can't get through this getting started guide in 30 minutes on conference Wi-Fi, come up to me. I'll say sorry, right? Uh, if you drink, I'll buy you a drink. Well, I'm kidding. I'm not going to stay that long. But I'll say sorry, uh, and I'll promise to do something nice for you. Um, and last but not least, if you're going to KubeCon, uh, consider signing up for the Linkerd Service Mesh in Production Workshop. Linkerd, you know, our claim to fame is that we're easy to use and we don't make you use any custom resource definitions to use Linkerd. So we adapt to you. We don't require your app to adapt to uh, our Service Mesh. Uh, but it's still, you know, like anything, you want to do, make sure if you're running in production, you do it right. We have a workshop that will tell you how to run Linkerd in production and get you over like the known failure modes so that you're, you're confident that you can do it. Uh, and if you haven't signed up or if you're looking for a nice free virtual event, uh, there's the Cube Crash event going on as a warm up before KubeCon Detroit. Would love to see you there. And now I'd love any questions if you all have them. And also thanks for the clap there. Well, if you don't ask me questions, I'll ask you questions. So that, that is a threat. Yeah. Yeah, great, great question. So uh, you asked if there's like an integration with Terraform. So Terraform's got a great, so Linkerd is something that you deploy into your Kubernetes cluster, 
right? And Terraform has actually built a lot of really good functionality around doing that. So the way we recommend for production users to install Linkerd in their cluster is using Helm. And Terraform has, if you don't know, Terraform has a really good Helm module that allows you to install and customize things inside your Kubernetes cluster. So that's the, that's the integration we recommend. Yeah, thank you. All right, I've got a really bad networking joke for you if I don't get anything else. All right, so I, I have a UDP joke for you. You may not get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so folks out there, who's, oh, yeah. How difficult is the upgrade? Uh, upgrading Linkerd? Well, so it, oh, yeah. So the question is, how difficult is it to upgrade Linkerd? So it's going to depend version to version, right? In general, we try and make it as, as simple as possible. Um, so I'd say going to Linkerd 212 is going to be the most difficult of the upgrades that I've seen so far. So the latest version of Linkerd that got released is Linkerd 2.12. Uh, it breaks up the Helm chart from what it was. We had one Helm chart that we were using for forever, the Linkerd 2 Helm chart. And we now have two Helm charts that you have to use for main Linkerd. So it's difficult, but if you test it and roll through it, like I was able to do a Linkerd upgrade via Helm in about three hours, right, with solid testing. Yes, I'm sorry. Do we allow you to skip version updates? Well, we'll allow you to do anything. It's an open source project. We would not recommend that you skip minor versions when you upgrade, right? Like it's, it's just not, it's not smart, right? And, and like anything, test thoroughly. But if you, like if you test it and you have a good path, like Godspeed, man, like do it. Um, but in general, we really recommend that you go minor version, minor version. Thank you so much for the question. Folks out there, who all has tried Linkerd? Okay, how many of you are at least considering trying Linkerd now? Okay, well, that's only a minor improvement, but I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks so much, folks, and that's, uh, that's all I've got.